Hello? Am I here? Can you see me? My hair is absolutely dreadful today. Thank you for the host, Zeus. Also, this camera angle is dreadful. But I wanted to start before really getting set up because I was late. So I'm finishing my snack right now. How are you guys? Mmm, yeah. The new kitchen, the cabinets anyway, will be done next week, I promise. <laughs> I have the next week, the rest of the week off. We're going away for our anniversary on Saturday, but they're gonna be painted. I'm finishing them. I'm gonna get an island so that I can put the cutting board there. Unfortunately, my laptop desk is not very high. I'm using it right now. So I'm gonna have to get um, something to put a camera on top of for that, but it's gonna be stellar. You guys are gonna be like, wow, it's like a whole different stream. It's gonna be amazing. 
and I can't wait. So, I was at work until three, and um, hi, bookworm. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, so yeah, I didn't get home until like 3.40, had to get some stuff set up, and uh, yeah, so I'm wicked behind. So I'm having my avocado toast while I talk to you guys. So how are you? How have things been? It's been two weeks. I've been um, very busy with just random stuff. And I can't wait to get my kitchen finished. Now you want stuffing. She says things have been meh. Minus the squash. Well, I'm stuffing it with chickpeas, not stuffing. It's a really good recipe, actually. I'm sorry to hear that, Zeus. But yeah, actually being able to do what you want is, is great. I hope you get that figured out though. How's your day at work going, MVP? Bookworm, having cranberries is perfectly appropriate for fall. In fact, the recipe that I'm making for the stuffed squash recommends having dried cranberries in it. But I keep forgetting to buy them. Whoops. Alright. No. It's not oops for you. Yes, I'm eating avocado toast. So, there's some avocado. There's some radish left. I also sprinkled hemp hearts and salt and pepper on top. Thanks for the resub, MVP. Three months already, wow. I had no idea I'd been streaming that long. Been an affiliate that long, that's crazy. That's crazy. Thanks, Penny. You're the best. Does anybody want to see Rusty? Come here. Here he is. <laughs> How's your day? Yeah? You having a good day? Say hi with your sock foot. Hi. Mmm. <laughs> So you guys, it's like 80 degrees outside and I have the windows open. Cause I figure it'll help heat the house. <laughs> Love you too, baby. All right, Rusty, I gotta put this squash in the oven or I won't be able to bake my apple crisp. In fact, they're probably gonna have to sit in there together. I hope it doesn't make it taste weird. Yes, and Tim's. Doggy close up, woo! <laughs> Tim's got a radish, just so you know. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get my chat open so I don't have to keep going over there, because literally I'm gonna be like, <laughs> in order to see the screen. And I'm gonna refocus the camera. Let me know if the music's too loud. I did put it on 1%. How's that? It also seems a little bright. That looks okay. All right. Oh yeah, I was getting my chat open. Whoops. Focus. Multitasking. Chat. 
chat. Okay. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> Please help. Okay. I got my spoon. I got my squash. The only other thing, other thing I'm gonna need is olive oil and salt. So I love stuffed squash. Have you guys ever made stuffed squash at home? Mmm. So the knife needs to be sharpened. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna cut both of these in half and then, hey, shh. Please stop. Did you wanna go out and bark at them? You can if you want. Go ahead, have fun. Mmm, <laughs> squash. Yeah. It's so good, I have actually made it year-round. It's just one of those things that I like the most when it's seasonal. And squash is pretty inexpensive. If you go to the farm stand, you can get it for like 79 cents a pound. I think he's back, you guys. I didn't hear any barking! You changed your mind? <laughs> no, go lay down. I'm a little busy, doggo. So this is an acorn squash. And you can actually do, like with pumpkin seeds, um, taking them out, taking the goop off putting them with some salt. Do in-season fruits foods have more nutrients? Um, yeah, so technically the fresher the food is, the more concentrated its nutrient content it is. Um, that being said, things are grown year-round now that aren't grown or weren't grown year-round before. Um, but a lot of things can determine how nu nutritious a uh, food is. But yeah, um, that is one of the things most people like about eating seasonally. It's supposed to be fresher, healthier for you, um, and of better quality. Like if you buy something, <sighs> oh my gosh, if you buy a food that's not in season um, from elsewhere, you know, it has to travel in order to get here. So like, obviously, in North America, when it's summer up here, it's usually winter on the other side of the world, you know, the bottom half. So, depending on where something is grown, it could take like three weeks to get up here. And even though it's still edible, it still has the nutrients, it's just not as much as it could have had before. Also, um, different types of vitamins can help you stay healthy during different times of year. So like these guys, orange vegetables have a lot of vitamin A in them and that's supposed to be better for you in the winter. That's one of the reasons why these foods are so good for you during this time of year. And like summery fruits, very high in vitamin C and water content, which is really good for the summer. So, nature is cool and amazing and also delicious. I think a lot of it is also societal, like, even though I w would like to eat sweet potatoes in the summer, I usually like eating them more when it's cooler out. Okay. My nose is stuffy. So, I have been trying to make foods with less oils because MVP is on Weight Watchers. 
and things that have a lot of refined carbs that are high in fat and that are high in sugar are not as Weight Watchers friendly. And I mean, I don't have to accommodate her diet, but it would be nice of me, you know? So that's what I do. Unfortunately, I can't find my quarter teaspoon. Did I clean it? I cleaned everything. Oh, you know what? I think I might have put it in the dishwasher. Let's see. Hmm. I'm gonna have to move you. But look at that, you guys. I can actually take the whole thing out. I hope my butt's not on screen. Okay. You appreciate it. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> um, so with the, uh, I'm gonna take my ring off so it doesn't get all sticky. With the oil, I've been trying to cook with um, just like a quarter teaspoon per squash. Um, so it's zero points per serving. So I'm just going to drizzle it in the front here and then massage it all over. And technically you don't have to cook your squash with oil, but um, vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. So you might not absorb as much of it. Your body might not use it if there's not a fat present while you're eating it. Um, I've, I've been told that that's kind of like one of those, like, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with protein combining. So back in the day, um, this book came out called, uh, I think it was Diet for a New America or something like that. But basically it was saying that um, plant proteins, in order to be a complete protein, meaning that it has all of the essential amino acids in it, you have to combine um, like rice and beans, like grains and beans in order to get the appropriate amount of amino acids. So basically it was like, it was saying that um, vegetarian foods are preferred, but in order to be healthy on a vegetarian diet, you have to combine those two things together when you're eating. That has since been debunked, um, but it's kind of the same thing. So some people speculate that if you have fat in your diet and you also eat the fat soluble vitamins your body will still be able to process it but it's not really explored thoroughly so I just go ahead and take the safer route and make sure that I have some fat in it while I'm eating it oh my god babe you're like <laughs> one of these days <laughs> the game library is just gonna collapse and all of your game pieces are gonna go everywhere because there's so many games on the shelf. <laughs> huh. But I look forward to playing a brand new game. She knows that I hate playing brand new games. So this is what happens. We get a game, we learn how to play it, and it takes three hours, and then we never play it again. <laughs> so every time we play a game, it's a new game. And I like games. But I also like being able to jump right into it and play it, like, instead of learning how to do it a million times. Hello, Jinx. I know you love games, honey. It's one of the things that I like the most about you. What kind of game was it? I'm sure everybody would like to hear about it. All right. Pig out, pig out. Do -do 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 -do. Thanks for the house, Jinx. I don't know what that means, Zeus Rumacub. 
Is that a card game or a board game? Okay, so I'm gonna bake these with the face down so they get a little caramelization while they're in the oven. Gloom, we saw it at PAX. I don't remember it. There were so many games. So many, so many games. All right, guys, so there's that. $15 on Amazon, that's a pretty good deal. So, it's a game with tiles. You need to make combos and then put them down on the table and be the first to run out of tiles. It sounds complicated. Is it like dominoes? I have to print this recipe. So I'm veganizing my mother's apple crisp. Which I've done before, but I never write it down. I'm also going to be changing it so it doesn't need to be exactly the same as I did before. And I fully intended to do this yesterday, you guys, but I am a slacker. I also got some cream of tartar. Oh, I'm not on the print network. Shoot. All right, I got to print from my phone then. Um, oh my goodness. So my original plan was to um, make this recipe healthier for MVP, but what I'm at, what I don't have time. What I'm gonna end up having to do is just veganizing it and cut back on the sugar. Um, and hope that that helps. And I'll have to calculate the points afterwards. Um, so hopefully it's not too high for you to have some. What do you mean the printer's not available right now? Okay. Rusty, stop! All right, and then I guess you won't eat any. Well, I'm hoping that it'll be some some points. Maybe you could just have a bite. I want you to have something to enjoy in your life. Don't you want to have something to enjoy? I also got cream of tartar to try to make um, aquafaba whipped cream instead of ice cream. So, let me get my my stuff set up here. <coughs> Rusty, stop! <coughs> stop. Get off. Get off! I don't want to hear you barking. Please. There's just somebody with their car outside. Making lots of noise. And he has a problem with that. Mucho big o problemo. Can you get out, please? Thank you. Yes, honey, it would be. Um, I remember liking that a lot when we used to do that at my mom's house. Sometimes I really don't like living in the city because there's a lot of noise outside. Like, all the time. Alright. Okay, baby. Did you know that Rusty likes to follow you everywhere, all the time, around the house, and outside? 
upstairs and downstairs. All right, so what we're gonna do, according to the directions, we're gonna peel and core the apples and then slice them really thin. Put the apples on the bottom of a dish and then put crumble topping on top and then bake it for 20 minutes. So, I need four to five peeled apples. I'm gonna get my pan out. And I just have little apples. I do have this big one, but I'm not sure what kind it is. It just kind of appeared in our basket. And it's a little spongy, so I'd rather not use it. You see this apple? It's very large. Maybe I'll juice it. Okay, so I've got... I'm probably gonna need to use six of these because they're so tiny. So when you're making an apple crisp, basically you just wanna make sure that the bottom of your pan is fully covered with the apples. Hey, stop barking. Please. No. You dropped a thing and it broke. You're fired. And I don't really have a peeler that's good for apples. So I'm gonna use a paring knife. Look out, please. I'm not really skilled at using this knife, but this is probably the only time that I pair anything, to be completely honest with you. Have you guys made apple crisp before? It's like apple pie, but crispier? <laughs> and, you know, if you eat the apple peels, it's actually very tasty. So feel free to do that while you work. Apple crisp is a big thing up here. My mom makes it all the time. Oops. Yeah, are you coming? Hi, Mama Bean. Hi, hello, can you see me? I'm making apple crisp. I like to cook in the kitchen, in case you hadn't known from my name. This is a really bad knife for cutting. <laughs> Clam and jongs, yes. Have you not been to one of my streams before, Mama Bean? I haven't streamed in a couple weeks. I usually have three cameras going, but because I'm really only making one thing at a time, um, and it's all in the oven, I figured I should just do this. Less set up, because I was really late. I worked until three, which I don't usually do. And, um... 
I just wanted to get started when I got home. Yep, uh, it's been two weeks since I streamed last. I usually stream on Tuesdays right now. Um, I was streaming like three times a week, but um, I, I got it in my head to paint my kitchen cabinets, um, and it's been taking forever. So um, I decided that I really had to only do once a week until the kitchen is done being painted. So I, I'm actually off work for the rest of the week. I don't have any other engagements until Saturday afternoon. So I'm going to keep focusing on painting the cabinets and I'm going to try to do some stuff outside. Um, and then hopefully buy something to put, uh, not, not put the camera on, um, buy some sort of like movable island so that I can actually face the camera while I'm cutting things. Have a really nice professional looking stream. That's my goal. And then I can stream more often again. But um, I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter, I was asking for suggestions on blog posts because um, I do want to do that again too. <sighs> yeah, I thought about doing that too, but um, I don't know if you can see up here. The lining up here is all really terrible. So, um, basically I'm painting the outsides right now, and then I'm going to go back and redo the lining on the inside. But, um, yeah, I have such limited amount of space that I stuff these cabinets full, and I really am not comfortable with having them open at the moment anyway. I was going to take all of the cabinets out and like redo all of them, make the kitchen all different and stuff, but like I tried to figure out how to rearrange everything to make it so like the positions of everything were the way I wanted and there's literally no more room in the kitchen to change like to move one thing or the other like I would basically be buying the same exact cabinets, just better ones. So I decided I was just going to paint. I'm going to put new hardware on. I'm going to get some some of those pull-out cabinet organizers eventually. Just going to improve upon what's already here. Yeah, I mean, the fake wood back there is just really bad. And I feel like... Um, ooh, that's, that looks like a good one. I feel like... There was some water damage, and they didn't, they didn't like fix it, they just covered it up. Yeah, it's actually really nice in here now. So, the walls were originally brown, like this really beigey brown color, and uh, I painted them green. It's a green that I actually really like, it's called Fresh Art Joke. And the cabinets are white, and then I'm going to eventually put some some nice backsplash up. I'm going to get some Farmer's Market-inspired artwork. It's going to be very colorful and cheery and bright instead of dark and boring. Your kitchen is green, too? Awesome! Great minds! Do you remember your paint color? Repainted the exposed brick. That's cool. I'd love to have exposed brick. So, I don't know what's happening with all these little boopies here. It was that way when I moved in. That makes sense. Whoops. Sorry. I 
can't say that word or he gets really excited. I don't know how, but somehow he figured out that that means something fell on the floor. Do you want this icky ganky piece? Here you go. <laughs> what a sweet dog. So, um... One of the things that I find really unfortunate about fall is that all of the recipes are really, really bad for you. <laughs> I, tr I would really like to be able to eat a slice of pumpkin pie every day. <laughs> In fact, um, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> One of my coworkers was saying that she just came up to me uh, yesterday and said, you know what's really good? And I I was thinking, you know, so she was going to tell me about something brand new. And she says, coffee and pumpkin pie. And I was like, ah! And that's all I can think about now is that I want, <laughs> I want coffee and pumpkin pie. But I'm going to have apple crisp, so. Apple crisp and whipped cream. If I can get the whipped cream to work. Pumpkin pie coffee. I'm not a flavored coffee person. <laughs> I don't even like pumpkin spice lattes, really. They were trying to develop a recipe at my work for one. Um, and they were all like, ooh, that's so great. Like a pumpkin pie latte smoothie. Sweetened with dates. It was alright. I just, I don't really like... Spicy beverages. Like, I like chai tea. I'm not really crazy about pumpkin spice lattes. MVP was talking about getting one of those apple peelers when we were at my cousin's wedding because it was at a apple orchard. And uh kind of regretting not buying one now. My coffee has to be the most unhealthy thing ever. Strong and flavored and sugary. Do you go to Starbucks every day? I usually have two cups of coffee a day. And I do add sugar each time. I think I'm going to do one more. Maybe two more apples. You just make your own? Well, tell me, tell me, like, what is in it? What do you do? And what do you mean you don't have a Starbucks? Where are you? That looks like a good one, too. So these um, apples that I'm using are Macintosh apples. Everybody up here is crazy about them. I think they're okay. They're definitely not my favorite apple. I like Honeycrisp and Pink Lady apples the most. Dark coffee and then you add some raw cacao, vanilla almond milk, and lots of sugar at the moment. But I bought some pumpkin coffee. I live in a small town in Ohio. Okay. Well, that does sound really good. Um, I've been trying to get into cacao powder because it's supposed to be like really energizing naturally. Um, I made so one of my coworkers makes like a. There's no coffee in it, but it's like an energy drink with maca, powdered maca, and cacao, and that's what she has instead of coffee. And the other day. I had, I warmed up some almond milk, and I put like two teaspoons of the cacao powder, and a teaspoon of maca, and like maybe a tablespoon, two tablespoons of maple syrup, and it was good, but by the time I got to work, it's starting to get chunky. So I don't know if that was the cacao, or the maca, it might have been the maca, but if I'm drinking something, it has to be liquid. I don't want to chew a beverage, thank you. Beverages are for drinking, not chewing. Smoothie is the same way. 
she makes movies um, that you need to chew. And I'm like, I'll pass, thanks. <laughs> Yes, pulpy OJ is nasty. Okay. I think this is good. We'll go with that. Yes, I like smoothies smooth as well. That's why they call them smoothies. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, good boy. Good boy, doggo. Okay, let me get these out of the way. And let's see. I wonder if there's enough room in the compost bowl to put these trimmings in. They would be chunkies or gritties. You're right, MVP. That's exactly how I feel. I think some people just get, they get endorphins off of doing something healthy. <laughs> I am not that person. Like if I'm doing something healthy, it also has to be enjoyable. Okay, put that away. So, I think I'm gonna just move these aside because I'm gonna need a bowl. Take those peels and make apple chips. Well, I already put them in my compost bin. I get cortisol from doing something healthy, says MVP. That's the opposite of what's supposed to happen. That sounds dope. <laughs> I agree. All right, so let's see. So in my mom's recipe, three quarters of a cup brown sugar. Damn, I feel like that's excessive. So I need a pen. Let's see what we can do here. Health stresses you out. Oh, my baby. We need to fix that. So, I feel like I'm going to take the flour down. I'm going to do a third of a cup. And I'm going to add like two tablespoons of shredded coconut, which will contribute to the sugariness without adding actual sugar. Half a cup rolled oats sounds good. I'm gonna do a quarter cup of, hmm. I think I'm gonna do coconut oil. Spices I'm gonna leave the same. Then for the sugar, so let's see. I was thinking about combining sugar and agave or maple syrup. Maple syrup sounds like a good idea. So. I think maple syrup is not necessarily equal to sugar and sweetness. Let me look it up. How much maple syrup to replace sugar? Perfect. Okay, so it says about three quarters, about three quarters strong. So if I decrease this, 
let's see, quarter cup times three. So if I did a half a cup and then the other amount would be a quarter, I could do an eighth of a cup maple syrup. Let's do that. No, I was only gonna use an eighth of a cup. How much do we have left? There's plenty. Lady, you crazy. You crazy lady. Okay, so we're gonna try this out. So before, before I do anything, I need to get all my spices. Where's my chat window, just in case? Okay, here we go. Okay. I don't really have any dates. The ones, I think I have some in the refrigerator, but they've been there for a year, so I'm not really sure I want to use those for a dessert. Maybe something like energy bars, because they're probably a little dried out. All right. So I need spicy spices, got ginger, and I need cloves and allspice, nutmeg, yep, okay, allspice, that's garam masala, not cloves, hello, what's happening? What's happening? I missed it. Can somebody tell me what happened? I missed it. And cinnamon, okay. Cinnamon. Oh, and I need a bowl. And I need a bowl to melt some coconut oil in, and I need coconut oil. Dang it. I can't wait until everything is back where it's supposed to be. Coconut oil, there we go. Stop falling over! A follow, welcome person whose name started with an M. Mort, okay. Well, thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. <laughs> Feel free to chime in to the chat. I think after 10 minutes you can say something. But um, yeah, I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you enjoy yourself. We are making apple crisp. And I need more measuring thingies. Thingies with which to measure stuff. Okay, so I need a third of a cup and a half of a cup. Okay, so I'm gonna melt my coconut oil, quarter of a cup. I'm using refined because I don't necessarily want it to taste like coconut. And I often will use coconut oil in place of butter in recipes. I actually like it a lot. So I started making cookies with it. Um, instead of margarine because it's fattier technically you're supposed to avoid saturate saturated fats but when you're making something like a dessert the whole point is that it's something special right so you're not supposed to have it all the time i feel like having some saturated fat in there is not that big of a deal Icky. what am i missing 
My son brought me a carbonated water thing. I don't know how, how I feel about it. Belching incoming. Do you not drink soda? Bean? We are big fans of carbonated water in this house. That's enough. That's enough barking. Rusty? Rusty. Leave it alone. Rusty. Hey, stop. Go lay down. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to melt this coconut oil. I'm basically going to do 30 seconds at half power, and then in a second, I'll do it again. Go lay down. Stop. You're too loud. Um, okay, so in my little bowl, I'm going to work at combining all of the dry things. Starting with the spices. You don't like carbonated drinks? Well, that's just just funny to me. <laughs> I love carbonated drinks. And I stopped drinking soda. But, um... Started making kombucha at home because I like them so much. So I've got two teaspoons of cinnamon. Which smells so great. And we're going to do a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And pretty much everything else. Ice water is pretty good stuff. Um, yeah, we used to drink that too. True story. We had these really strange, creepy neighbors when we were in Austin. Like, the very last neighbors we had. And they would get these deliveries of drinks to their house. And it would just be sitting out there. And then we realized that they don't live there anymore. And these people are still dropping off drinks. So we just started going over there and taking some of them <laughs> because we're horrible people um but yeah it was a sparkling fruity drink and we tried it a couple times and then we realized we didn't like them very much and also we didn't want to get in trouble so we stopped doing it um yeah so a quarter teaspoon of each nutmeg ginger cloves and allspice It was free drinks! They, nobody was there anymore. And I don't know who to talk to. We saw other people doing it too, so don't be that judgy. They would also, they had, there was like three families living in this apartment and they would come up to you and ask you if you wanted to buy any toys. Like not the kids, but like the grown-ups. I don't know what their deal was. Okay. So I need oats and flour and sugar. Come on. <laughs> no! Stop! Everything's falling out. Okay, so... That... That is enough. Stop. Hey, get off. Go to your room. Nobody wants to listen to you. Leave it alone. He barks at everything when the windows are open. No! Those are your neighbors! They come home every day! Every day! Um, a third of a cup for... Where'd my third of a cup go? 
I know I grabbed one. I guess I grabbed two half cups by mistake. Are you a third? Okay. <laughs> you maintain they were a cult. Yeah, it was very strange. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yay! Alright, give me a second and I'll go grab a cookies. <laughs> so, you guys don't mind the dog barking in your face? Alright. Whatever makes you happy. He's very concerned. He's very concerned about it. Oh yeah, cookies. Who was that? Ah! Now there's mustard. <laughs> Look out. Don't lick anything that's on the floor. <laughs> we are still consuming home-free chocolate chip. Was it, was it Yuzu's who, uh, did the cookie? You guys, you can all do cookies. I'm pretty sure there's no... There's no... Cool down. There's only a cool down per person. Thank you, Zeus. Yummy! You too can give me a cookie. If you have 200 beans. And the way you know is if you click on the little treasure chest that's on the screen and it'll tell you how many beans you have. I guess maybe I fixed it. I'm sorry. When I first had it, it would like, it would like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's the thing. Okay. So you have to click on your treasure chest and where it says something about redeeming beans, it's in there. All right, I'm trying to focus. Focusing. Sugar. There's literally bags of baking ingredients all over the floor because they kept falling out of the pantry. Okay, and I do have brown sugar, so I'll just do that. I'll stick with that. It will just be less. There's that. Do you have enough? <laughs> All right. Just enough. So, half a cup brown sugar. And Ooh. that's pretty softened. Okay, we're just gonna do that. Oh, I need my coconut. Two tablespoons. Did a third of a cup of flour, half a cup of sugar, and then I need my eight eighth of a cup of maple syrup. Okay. Wait, why am I coming over here? Coconut. And I need a tablespoon that I haven't gotten yet. I don't know if I have one anywhere. Nope. So I'm just gonna have to use the kitchen one. Oi. Ah, what she saying? Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know, honey. Maybe you don't. Maybe next time. Okay, so I'm using two tablespoons of Bob's Red Mill desiccated coconut, which makes it fat free. The more you know. That should also help make it crispy. Did you know that most granola has shredded coconut in it to make it sweeter without sugar? They also have a lot of sugar in it though. <laughs> but that's the reason it's there. Okay, so we've got the fat. Now we're going to add the maple syrup. And it's going to be syrupy and delicious. One eighth of a cup. This looks pretty amazing. Okay, let me get some of these things out of the way. So then all we gotta do is spread this over on top. And there's a cat here, of course, everywhere. And I'm just gonna smush it around with my fingers. Fingers work best. So basically what this is gonna do is the fat and sugar are gonna melt and make the apples all goopy and spicy. And then the oats and the coconut and the flour are gonna crisp up and that's gonna be crispy. And it's gonna be wicked yummy. So, there's still some time that the squash has to bake, so I'm going to have to put them in at the same time. But there's not a whole lot of seasonings, so it shouldn't be that weird, hopefully. But we'll find out. Ooh, steamy. I can't see. I can't see. Ugh. You know, one thing I forgot to do is grease my pan. I would recommend that you do that before you put the apples down. Um, so then this just bakes. And it's actually recommended to bake in 350 degrees. And the squash has to be at 375. So I'm going to check it in like 16 minutes instead of 20. Alexa, set a timer for 16 minutes. And then the squash should actually be ready. So we're going to do that next. We're going to make the filling. 
So let me put some of this stuff away. So this is a Moroccan spiced squash recipe. I'm not sure if I can give you the link to the, to the page I got it from because it's a Weight Watchers recipe and some of their content is not free. But I'll look it up and find out. So, I've made this before and I like it a lot, so that's why I'm making it again. It's basically a chickpea filling. Here we go. And I'm going to reserve the liquid from the chickpeas to try to make whipped cream out of for the apple crisp, which I've never done before. But I've heard a lot of people have really good success with. So we're gonna try it. And I need a ceramic bowl for that because it's gonna be whisked. And I don't have one. Where's my big ceramic bowl? Big bowl. The big bowl. MVP, have you seen the big bowl? Those are colanders. It's gonna be somewhere. Oh, you only have 36. Unfortunately, it costs 200 beans to give me a cookie. I guess maybe I should change that if I want more cookies, huh? Oh, there's the bowl. Thank goodness. Okay. So, I need my strainer. And my can opener's already here. <laughs> You guys are funny. I don't need any more cookies anyway. I'm gonna have apple crisp for dessert. Or, you know, before dinner, because <laughs> you guys are gonna wanna see me. Try some, right? All right, so I'm just gonna put that liquidy stuff off to the side. My goodness. Okay, so for the filling, I'm basically gonna saute the chickpeas with some onion. Oh, and the pan is in the drain board. Silly me. Oh. I'm so silly. MVP is probably on her way home. She can't tell me if there's a pan. She's not even here anymore. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay, so... I need onion and garlic in the pan. Oh, that's not good anymore. Hello. I wonder if this onion is squishy too. Oh, gross. Look. That's disgusting. Well, shoot. I'm gonna have to use a red onion. Hopefully that's not too weird. Hey, get out please. Come on, you gotta get out of the way. You're in the way. Oh, 
Mama Bean, you're just gonna have to keep coming back so you earn enough beans. To give little old me a cookie. So the recipe calls for two cloves of garlic, but I'm putting in four. It's better that way. And onion, just one little onion. As previously mentioned, supposed to be a yellow onion, but mine were gross. Because garlic, exactly. And so this is a zero point recipe. I'm not going to cook with any oil. I'm just going to saute this all with some water. MVP says one of her most favoritest smells is onion sautéing in a pan. She's Italian. Oh, you always cook with water? You're so responsible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some water ready in this little, little thingy here. And I'm going to cover it so my eyes don't start burning. And we are done with the chopping. I can get rid of this cutting board. Yep, Forks Over Knives is great. I have their cookbook and I haven't made a whole lot of stuff out of it because I feel like a lot of the, the processes are too many steps for most nights, but we did make um, some chowder. I think it was a corn chowder. That was pretty good. MVP made that actually. She saw it in there and was very intrigued. So it needs cilantro, but I think I'm just gonna like pick that off when I'm when I'm ready. So we got that out of the way. Okay, so I got chickpeas and. It's basically cinnamon and cumin for the seasonings. Um, cumin, where are you? There we go. So some of it gets mixed into the chickpea stuff and then some of it just gets sprinkled on top of the squash. You don't like beans? I love beans. I use them a lot for everything. I have to remind myself of the steps here. Okay. So that's ready when that's ready to go. Excuse me. So, um, for the whipped cream, I'm gonna look it up here. Easy aqua faba whipped cream. So I need vanilla and sugar. So basically the liquid from a can of beans, they call aquafaba and it behaves very similarly, but not exactly like egg whites. So a lot of people use it just to make whipped cream, but people have been experimenting with it in baking. I even have a cookbook that's all about making recipes with this stuff. Um, unfortunately, I can't use the recipes out of it because most of them require you to make it reduced. So basically, you take 
dry chickpeas, soak them and then cook them in a slow cooker with a piece of specific type of seaweed. I think it's kombu. And then you drain the liquid. You take the seaweed out, you save the chickpeas for whatever, and it's like this super viscous chickpea brine that works very well in baking and, and other applications. So I just have some from a can of chickpeas that we're gonna use. So I got my cream of tartar, two teaspoons vanilla extract, and then powdered sugar. Okay, so this is for two cans, so I need to do less. A teaspoon of vanilla and then like a quarter cup of powdered sugar. I can smell those onions. I have powdered sugar left. I was pretty sure I had everything. any powdered sugar. Oh, that's terrible. Nope. Okay, well, I guess I'm not making whipped cream. It's kind of a thing. It's required. You can't just make it without. Oh, well. This is why I got ice cream, just in case it didn't work. Well, that's sad. Yeah, you can definitely make it on your own. Um, I did it a couple times. In fact, I have some in the freezer because it makes so much I wouldn't be able to use it um, all before it went bad. But, where did this come from? Sprouts, interesting. I guess I'm just gonna have to save this for later. I'll do the same thing, I'll put it in the freezer. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my, my stuff in there. For the stuffing. So... Seasonings. Half a teaspoon of cumin, quarter teaspoon salt, and a quarter teaspoon cinnamon. Alexa, add cinnamon to the shopping list. Tis the season. Um... I think it'll work really well, Mama Bean. I've just never done it. Like, I have a jar. Actually, I separated them into um, half cups because according to um, the cookbook, a half a cup of liquid is about one egg when it comes to substituting. And um, the whole cookbook is pretty much based, based on this technique. So I just did what they recommended. I mean, I guess I could try it with a liquid sweetener. But it might not do the same thing. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? Ooh, one minute and 20 seconds. Okay, so... So that's pretty much it for the squash. Um, it also wants you to put um, toasted nuts on top, which I don't have any right now, so I'll probably just do regular like walnuts or something. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, the recipe doesn't call for it necessarily, but I like to squish the chickpeas a little bit so it has more of a filling. 
texture. Let's bring you guys over here. And I learned this from the garbanzo chorizo recipe that I made a while back. Alexa, stop. So the apple crisp should be almost done. Rusty, stop! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Why are you barking? Why? What? What's the matter? Is, is MVP coming or something? Is she coming home? Is she here? Woo! Camera fell over. I don't know, Rusty. I think you're imagining things. Rusty! Hi! Why are you working? I feel like this is not where I had it. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this apple crisp. Hot, hot, hot. It smells really good. But it's not really crispy. I think it needs to solidify a little bit more. So I'm gonna put it back in. And we'll do like 10 more minutes. See, the thing, the thing about changing ingredients is that you don't know how it's all gonna behave. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay. So, there's our squash. They're wonderfully toasted. And I don't have enough room for everything. Oh, um, thank you for coming, bookworm. Have a good night. Okay, 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 okay. These can go away. That doesn't even have to be here. These I need. Those are all done. Okay, so I can get a couple, actually I'll put a couple bowls. A couple bowls for the squash. And then I can put the other ones in lunch containers. And then I can get this whole thing out of the way. Tongs. My tongs are dirty. Okay. Let's try to scoop this up. Scoop it up into the cup. Nope. <laughs> challenging. There we go. So yummy smelling. Look at that. Delicious, delicious caramelization on there. Most excellent lunches tomorrow. Mama Bean, do you like acorn squash? I 
I suggest you try it out. It's very, very good. Okay. So... Where's my mitt? Oh, right here. For a second, I was afraid that I put it in the oven. That would have been really bad. Look out, Rusty. Oh yeah, it's delicious. You should definitely try it out. All right, I need another bowl. I guess maybe I'll just scoop some filling in there and then I will put the cilantro on top. So to finish these off, you're supposed to sprinkle the rest of the spices and I just kind of sprinkle it randomly. So I'm sprinkling the squash itself with some more cinnamon and cumin. And then I'm gonna put some of this chickpea stuff in there. And squish it just a little. Okay. So all I need is my cilantro. Is it like sweet potatoes, pumpkin-like? That's what you've always assumed it was, texture-wise at least. Um, it is very similar. So it is a, a little stringy, and that's why you want to cook it for as long as possible. A lot of people will do like a whole hour. We did about an hour. Um, so yeah. When you salt it and cook it with the face down, it steams on the inside, cooks it through, and then it gets this nice little caramel crust around the edges that were touching whatever you put down underneath it. So you can use like a silicone liner or parchment paper. Both of those work really well. I've used them interchangeably. Um, yeah, yummy. So I'm also going to sprinkle it with a little bit of lime juice because that is also in the recipe. And I just got to find my cilantro in all of this craziness. My refrigerator is insane. Okay, down here. If you'd like, you could also put some green onions on top. And I did already wash the cilantro, in case you were wondering. Cilantro is very, very good for you. It's a high antioxidant herb. Mama Bean, I didn't actually start eating squash until about three or four years ago. I started with butternut um, because it's, it's more like sweet potato in flavor. <laughs> Cilantro, no. You don't like it? Does it taste like soap to you? I love it. 
It's one of my favorite things. Well, that makes me sad. <laughs> I like cilantro that much. But I understand. Isn't it funny how some people's, like, taste palettes can be so different? Here she is! MVP! MVP! So, that... That is it. That's it. Beautiful and full of autumn flavor. You want to go outside? You want to go outside and say, hey, mommy? Go get her. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? Okay, so our dinner's done. I'm gonna take a look at dessert again. It is getting a little bubbly. Very bubbly. <laughs> Do we have a neighbor visitor? Yeah, Ooh! Jealous that most of the The apples are definitely cooked. It's also good in here. It probably is good. But it's gonna be wicked hot, so... Yeah, this looks pretty great, so I'm just gonna let it cool. Yeah, it's kind of pulling away from the sides. It's not a big goopy mess on the bottom, but it is cooked. So yeah. Alexa, stop. So that is it. Yummy. Goopy and delicious. <laughs> So I'm going to basically just take this little piece here and let it cool so I can eat it. Zeus says I'll be over in six hours. <laughs> oh, it just smells so good! <laughs> it smells like fall. It smells like cinnamon. Yep. And apples. Yep. And deliciousness. I'm going to eat it in like two seconds. Just yeah, so I can tell them. Well. I know! <laughs> Zeus says hi, McVegan1. She says, hi, McZuso one. I don't know that that works, but. <laughs> McZuso pants, 939. He says, what's the Weight Watchers report? Are you asking about, like, how many points this would be? Because I have to put that into the computer. They have a recipe thing, so I don't know yet. Zuso pants. LOL. <laughs> well, if you want, honey, you can take this and eat a dinner food. Okay. It's zero points. I can have a beer with you then. Go ahead. <laughs> Alright, let's see if this is cool enough to eat. Mmm, yummy. Probably it's um, very wet around here. No, 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 no. It could be an onion. Pick it up. Let me check the bottom of your bowl. Okay, you're good. Mmm. Hoo hop. Hoo hop. Hot, hot, hot. hot. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So this is freaking delicious. And the way you serve it is you let it cool for a few minutes and then you put vanilla ice cream on top.
It'll make you more relaxed. Anyway. Taste it again, okay. <laughs> it's just gonna be really hot, so I have to let it sit here for a second. Make sure just in case. Well, here's the plan. I don't have any paper towels over here. Dang. Well, I'm gonna take this cup and I'm gonna balance my fork over this cup. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> um, so when I go to eat dessert, I'll take a picture of it all together and I'll put it on Twitter so you guys can see it all together. Um, but yeah, it's, can you see it here? The apples are all nice and soft and it's a little, like the, the stuff is very candy-like. Um, it's less liquid than what the original recipe called for, but it's still very chewy and the oats have crisped up very nicely, but it's like a nice like pecan filling texture. Like the oats are very nice and crisp. It's very good. So the plan is that I'm going to put the recipe both in the Discord and on the VOD. So whichever works best for you, you can go and check it out, print it up, try it at home, and there will be a picture when it's all said and done. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. We will be back next week. I'm going to be making like a pumpkin spice pudding out of silken tofu, pumpkin, and spices. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to cook it or not. I found a recipe that's like just pureeing it and chilling it. But I kind of feel like I want to try using some agar flakes to thicken it up, cook it, and then chill it so it's a little firmer. But I haven't decided yet whether or not I want to do that. So you guys enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you on Tuesday at four o'clock. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and let me see if there's anyone, excuse me, burping, that we wanna, that we wanna raid. So I'm checking belly. Let's see. Ooh, okay. So this person's name is Ranzetta, and she or he is making pumpkin pie, dinner rolls, and bite-sized baked potatoes. And that sounds right up our alley. You know, I think she was the last person we raided, so we're going to do that again. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to copy and paste her name. Whoa, Mouse, where are you going? So make sure you tell her hi, and you guys have a great night. I'll see you next week. Bye.